Each year, we gather together at this International Organic Trade Show in Congress to visit old friends and colleagues, make new contacts, and expand our network. <coughs> Exchange ideas and learn. Find opportunities and solutions, and envision and create equitable and sustainable business practices. Um, eradicating hunger and poverty. This nexus is still there. We saw it just before. Again, a billion people hungry. And with the latest price increase in the last few weeks, there's 14 million more people who joined those ranks. So it doesn't take much to actually get that number up very, very quickly. Uh, because, as we know, the poor, poor poverty and, and hunger are very, very linked. Um, improving the rural livelihoods, we have to again put life back into the countryside. Uh, we cannot let the countryside sort of go desert, be deserted by the people when we have 1.5 billion people have no jobs. So we need an agriculture which employs people, not which sends people into slums. Priority is actually not on production. You will hear that very often from, from many people saying, yeah, can organic feed the world? Do we have enough to produce? Will we start all starve by 2015 when we have like 9, million pe 9 billion people on the planet? And if there's an increased meat consumption, do we have enough production by then? Or will we have a shortage of it? And of course, it's fully ridiculous. We will have enough uh, um, food by then. It's not a production issue. It's actually a people's issue. Reality is that conventional agriculture nowadays fails uh, to nourish the planet. We have one billion hundred people and you have overproduction. Uh, and the problem is actually that we focus on production, uh, we invent GM crops, we, uh, we would like to have more and more taken out of the soil instead of actually empowering people to enable them that they can um, provide enough or pr produce enough food for their families. We do believe, and it actually has proven, um, that it is the most competitive way to do agriculture, to actually develop, to develop um, society <coughs> or a community. Because if you do the calculation right, organic is actually cheaper. We currently carry out for Egypt a study together with McKinsey and Boston Consulting Group where we internalize all the external costs. First of all, you take off subsidies on fertilizers. And then you take off subsidies on energy, which is the main input to fertilizers. Then you take in soil costs, restoration costs, biodiversity costs, so if you put this on the balance sheet, then already today organic agriculture is cheaper and we did this for seven commodities in Egypt and it's around about 20 to 30% cheaper than conventional practices. So this is just some images of the different types of reality of agriculture today and we're trying to shift with our advocacy work and with the strategies and attention towards moving from the left to the right. And you can see, as Urs has already mentioned, that organic farming systems, um, they're basically um, high sequestration because they're very effective at putting carbon into the soil and they're low emission because we use a lot less inputs, a lot less um, fossil fuels, whether it's in our transportation or mechanization on farms or through the manufacture of the inputs. Well, and the reality is, you know, if the world, by some miracle, agreed to actually reduce greenhouse gases, it would be 50 years before we get things back to normal. So the reality for us as farmers is we have to learn to adapt. By hands, in a way, to be proud to be a farmer is really very important. And I've met a number of farmers who would really say, now I'm again, I'm proud to be a farmer. Uh, and that self-esteem is something that we really need in a time where the average age of farmers around the world, not just here in Germany or the Netherlands, it's increasing. We need farms that are proud to be a farmer again. We see actually what we are. We are a <coughs> new traditional food system, but not only traditional, we merge it actually with, uh, with science. We think from the field to table and then most importantly, we have certified organic agriculture. We stand behind and it's very important if we talk about markets, if we talk about assuring consumers' trust. But equally important is actually also non-certified organic agriculture. All the guys that are using it either by default 
or intentionally say no certification is not an option for me but the, the principles are guiding print, uh, the other four principles they are guiding me and I work uh, work along these principles what we think the and you see that from the slogan, that's organic worldwide. That is the definition of organic by the organic movement. With that, we draw a line, and you see the line around the frame, a line between organic and not organic. It has been with iPhone for a very long time, and I'm glad to see iPhone regaining strength. That's good to see. I am confident that organic agriculture can be the safeguard against the new imperialism in the name of sustainability and food security. We have the passion. We have the experience and knowledge. Let's stand together in a united effort to reform public policy and encourage private sector actions that put people first before profit, convenience, and business as usual. Thank you very much. Rapunzel, Jodo, Dr. K. 